You know, it's funny. I, uh, first of all, how many are going to be here on Thursday night? Please, as many of you can do. Because if we start that process, then you probably won't have to have impromptu speakers <laughs> come speak to you. But um, I guess the thing that I thought about um, when they said that Reverend Ann wasn't here yet, and I said, well, you know. God always provides. Um, I didn't know that it would be providing through me. <laughs> but, um, I have this, I have this, I guess what's going on for me right now, in my mind, is it's about change. And I'm going to do a little exercise. I want to do popcorn. I want people to say one word about that, how they felt the past three days. Fabulous. Sad. Optimistic. Grateful. Revolution. Is Hopeful. Yeah. Excited. Energized. Connected. Ch change. Concern. You know, it's change. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid, we moved a lot when I was a kid. Um, my dad was a project architect and we moved like seven times between the time I was seven and 15, so that's a lot. And when I would see the moving boxes come out, mm -hmm. I would go into fetal position. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew that I was gonna have to make new friends, mm -hmm. find my place in a new environment. Mm -hmm. And um, that was scary. There's no question about it that it was scary. But uh, it always seemed to work out. So maybe I learned a little bit from that as I matured. And I do think that right now we're living in a period of change. And I think we're, you know, it's, it's important for us in our faith as a part of the science of mind to recognize what we do feel, right? It's okay to feel sadness. It's okay to say, you know, we're giving up something that we had and some comfort level that we had with that. Um, and having new things come in. It's also evident to me that, um, you know, in that opportunity, there was a spontaneous march, the Women's March. Um, and, and, you know, I, I just think that's how consciousness works. Who knew? No one knew on the 9th of November that they were going to amass uh, half a million people on the mall all with um, differing agendas, with differing concerns, with differing um, hopes, differing fears. And I think that that's, you know, that's, for us, should be evidence of how the divine mind works. It works through all of us, all the time. And I think that we have the opportunity in these moments of change to realize that what Ernest taught us is that we can choose our thought. We can choose how we want to think about things. Viktor Frankl, one of my favorite books when I was a kid, uh, in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, said nothing, you know, the only thing you absolutely have control over is your ability to respond, to react. You can choose how you react to your environment. So I think we have this object lesson right now on how we're going to choose to react in our world. And me, for one, I want it to get better. I believe that better is possible. We have not achieved, achieved best. <laughs> so, so for me, you know, that's, that's been center to my prayer, center to my thought, as I look and see what happens. Um, I also think it's a good excuse to cuss at the TV. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I try to, try to minimize that if I can a little bit. Um, <laughs> My partners informed me that I have work there to do. Um, 
But I think that, you know, at, at my core, I think that that's part of uh, what we're, what we've come to understand in the science of mind is that that thought is creative and that the opportunities abound and are abundant for a goodness in our lives. And it's, it's up to us to choose a thought and a path to that, to that picture of what uh, better looks like. And I think, you know, one of, that's, that could be one of the struggles in science of mind. Ernest never told you how to identify better. <laughs> in fact, I just did a quick scan in the science of mind, thinking I could come up with a good quote. In the index, there isn't a, a section for change. <laughs> Who knew? There, there's opportunity there. I could write a new thought book, and it could be about change. The missing, the missing chapter, or the missing <laughs> table of contents entry from the science of mind. Um, but as I think about it, I, I think that that is, uh, in so many ways, at the heart of all of our struggles. Whether it's today's struggles with the change in administration at our executive branch, or whether it's our struggles in our lives as we lose people that we love, they leave, um, or whether it's change in our work environment, something that we're you know familiar with, and then suddenly that's changed, and you think, well, why did they do that? I think that that's you know that that uh, that concept of change is where we get to apply our um, science of mind. And I think that for me, it also is where faith comes in. Um, that's my weak spot. You know, I've always known that's my weak spot. I took a class from Terry Cole Whitaker, and, and uh, it was Masteries in Faith. And, you know, after six weeks, and you know, every Wednesday night for six weeks, came away and, you know, that was, what did you learn? And I, I learned I don't have any. <laughs> you know, and I probably need to get some. <laughs> is there, is there follow-on class to this? Or I can absorb something? So I think that, you know, that's the, the living part and it's, it's being able to pray and move your one foot right in front of the other. Pray and move your feet with some belief that there is a higher power that's guiding you. That you don't have to have all the answers to the change. You just have to be willing to accept that change is an absolute. You know, I see all your lovely faces. And I think you all have stories. You know, there's 50 stories here. 50 great stories. 50 stories that have peaks and have valleys. And, you know, to me it's beautiful that we can come together in a center and acknowledge that part of our humanity and also learn that there's a teaching. And that teaching, you know, when I think about it, when you think about when Ernest wrote The Science of Mind, it was like 1918. It was before the close of the World War I. Then he went through World War II. Then he went through, you know, um, the post-war era, the Cold War era. All of those changes were going on, and people, you know, I think, probably came into his sanctuary having concerns similar to ours all the time. And he enunciated a philosophy that allows us uh, a vision, a path to claim our goodness, to claim goodness for others, for this nation, for the world, for the climate. Claim that good and then pray and move our feet. I think that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so, so, um, Thanks for your patience, well, for you. you know, and, and 
And I bless Ann wherever you are, Ann. I'm sure that Ann will come back with robustness and the next time we see her and you'll just have to say, well, boy, we really missed you. <laughs> boy, it's a tough Sunday. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. That's, that's really all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you.